Hello guys, awesome kitty zombie here. First of all, if you are here solely for the research part, please click here to go straight to that part, and I hope that you enjoy the video. For those of you who have stayed to listen to the rambles, I'm here today with the research project for my college history class. The assignment was to research and report on something that has shifted over time in the 1900s in the United States. My subject is the rise on animal rights. I apologize if the audio is messed up, sounds off, is wacky, if I sound monotone, or don't sound like I know what I'm doing, because really, I don't know what I'm doing. This is a first. Now I've done my best to research this information, but please, don't take it all to heart. I'm sure that some of the information that I found could be wrong, could be off, I could have interpreted wrong, I could have written down the wrong thing. So make sure you do your own research if you're really interested. I'm not a professional, so please don't treat me as one. Now, without further ado, let's get on to the research. Animal rights have been argued and disputed over for centuries. There are some laws that have been dated back to 1600s for animal rights and even farther, one of them including the care for goats. Can you imagine? Goats were one of the first animals to receive animal rights. Now, in the 1700s and the early 1800s, animal rights weren't discussed much. There was no rise for action for them. In the late 1800s and into the early 1900s is when we really started to see a pickup of animal rights. Now, animal rights began to rise in the late 1800s because often when an animal was old, diseased, sickly, or just they weren't useful and profitable to the owner anymore, they were just turned loose in the city. That's it. They didn't care. This created problems for other drivers of carriages and people who were pedestrians. They couldn't get to their destinations with all of these sickly animals who were just abandoned everywhere. And the animals couldn't simply be killed because the animals were considered property. Now, the New York Act was the first law to address the problem. It stated, Every owner, driver, or possessor of an old maimed or the diseased horse or mule turned loose or left disabled in any street, lane, or place in the city for more than three hours shall be adjudged guilty of a misdemeanor. This was enacted in 1866. Although these laws were mainly just for horses and mules, it was a huge leap for animal rights in the United States because they started to address that there was a problem here. 1866 was also the year that the ASPCA was founded. So now we've got the history and the first ever startings of animal rights down. But it wasn't really until the 1900s that things really started to pick up. It was between 1900 and 1914 that many animal rights organizations began to appear. After the extinction of the passenger pigeon, the heath hen, and the almost complete slaughter of the American buffalo, these organizations began to demand that these animals, as well as other endangered animals, to be protected. They also wanted more measures to be taken into the care of animals being experimented on, tested on for products, and for animals who were in personal care of households. They wanted these animals to be taken care of and to be treated right. Now, unfortunately, the push for animal rights came to a halting standstill from about 1914 to 1950. World War I, World War II, as well as the Cold War and the Great Depression just took up too much of the government's time and occupation. Now, a surge of activists and protesters demanding for better treatment of animals began to rise again in the 1950s. Their cries for equal treatment of animals resulted in the Humane Slaughter Act of 1958 and the Animal Welfare Act of 1966, almost a hundred years after the ASPCA was founded. Now, as animal rights and the demand for them began to grow in the 1960s to the 2000s, many different organizations began to appear. PETA, which was formed in the year of 1980, were one of those organizations which has caused a huge impact for animal rights. PETA stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Despite today and the controversies that PETA has, PETA did begin with true intentions for ethical treatment of animals. 18 members founded the organization, and now the organization has over hundreds of thousands of people today. 
I mean, look at all that they've done. From the 1980s to the 2000s, a collection of all sorts of laws and regulations were being enacted and put in place, and even being enforced. People started to get punished for treating their animals badly, receiving jail time and fines. There were regulations and laws about how an animal could be treated. This was huge in the time, because animals started to receive proper care, they started to receive equal treatment, and they can be taken away from the abusers. Now the fight for animal rights still continues to this very day. There are still hundreds of companies, farmers, and private owners who mistreat and abuse their animals. As we fight for the rights of animals, more and more people realize that these animals deserve equal treatment and equal quality of life. It's thanks to the extraordinary efforts made by people in the 1900s to fight for animal rights that we have the laws and regulations that we have today.